Hi everybody, I know it's been a while since I've uploaded any videos, it's been just too busy with getting moved into the new shop, which you can see is happening, but <clears throat> quite a disaster zone right now. But anyways, I got this interesting project, so I thought I'd shoot some video of it. So I've got this little uh, spline shaft, 17 millimeters in diameter, it's got a 15 tooth involute spline on each end. And this thing is to a uh, small New Holland uh, compact tractor. It's a little bit of an oddball. It's got a gasoline engine, I guess, instead of a diesel, and they didn't make very many of those. So anyways, long and short of it, this shaft is wore out. I don't know how well it shows up in video, but you can see it's really chewed up here, and then like down here, some serious wear in the spline. Anyways, <clears throat> these parts are not available. Um, when they first contacted me about doing this, I suggested they go to a gear and spline shop, because it's kind of expensive tooling up for this, and a lot of busy... A lot of horsing around to get it to work but they took it to a spline some kind of shop and they quoted them two thousand bucks to make this shaft so i agreed with them that was pretty outrageous so said if they'd buy the cutter i'd have at it so here we are after talking to uh, uh ash gear and supply they did some number crunch and took some dimensions and they tell me this is the cutter i need so this is a uh 2448 involute 30 degree pressure angle that's i've laid it in the splaying teeth and it does look correct so we're going to have a roll on this and see what we can do with it so i just figured I'd shoot a little video of getting set up right now i've got the old shaft in here just kind of mocking up where i want this um i actually got this uh, universal indexing head from a friend of mine because i did not have one i've got a, a cushman uh, well hartford super spacer but it did not have the correct masking plates and I guess I'd have to have a different master plate because mine's a 24 tooth so there's no way to uh, do an odd number tooth like a 15 tooth with that so anyhow this does have the um oh I forget what they call that uh, indexing plate set up but thankfully I don't need to use that because it has direct indexing also and this is a 60 tooth on the back side of this direct indexing plate so Obviously, 60 is divisible by 15, so we can just, uh, let's see, it be, what, every four teeth? Uh, yeah, skip three and grab the fourth one every time. I can cut a 15-tooth spline. So, anyway, I'll shoot some more video once I get set up. I'm getting ready to swing the head on the mill. I don't want to run my table way off to one side. I don't like this heavy stuff on my Bridgeport table hanging way off one end. So, what I'm going to do is keep it centered on the table so that you know, this this thing especially, big and heavy, is staying at least close to the saddle. I don't know if you're all aware of this, but these Bridgeport tables are very notorious for warping over time. I don't really want to antagonize it. Uh, believe it or not, when we rebuild one of these, we frequently find at least eight thousandths of bow. We found them as high as almost twenty-five thousandths worth of bow in these tables when we go to rebuild them. So... Anyway, as a result of that, I try my best to never let big heavy stuff hang out off the end if I need don't have to. So I'm going to rotate the uh, uh, turret on this thing to the left with the idea being that I'm going to come in, cut from this end. Um, I'll be plow milling against the um, indexing head because, of course, you don't want to ever risk having your uh, Morris taper center come loose here because you lose your indexing. So I want to keep the load all against that when I'm machining. So I'll shoot some more video when we get to that stage. All right, everybody, we've uh, made some big leaps forward. I forgot to shoot any video, but none of it was rocket science. So I have machined this blank up in the lathe. Um, we had some hang-ups with that because uh, I actually had a problem with uh, the feed screw and my tailstock broke so I had to stop and fix that before I could finish this but at any rate and then uh, since you guys saw last we've got this stuff all actually centered up squared up somebody had had this adjusted to a different height than that center which I can't think of any earthly reason why you would do that but somebody had so I had to loosen it up and uh, get it you know running back and forth I put the bar in and then ran back and forth across this bar with uh, my height gauge until I got it set to where that bar is dead true and checked it running uh, as far as parallel with the table this way I'm within a thou and a half and over the length of that bar and I just say that was good enough um, these are keyed and I mean keys aren't perfect so I think 
you know, considering I'm only actually cutting an inch and three sixteenths worth of spline on each end, thou and a half over the length of that amounts to a few tenths over the length of the spline. We can live with that. Um, I just got done putting this on center. If you want to see any good videos on this stuff, I'm not doing this to educate you on how to cut splines. Go look at Mr. Pete's channel. He really knows what he's doing better than I do. I'm mostly just showing you guys what can be done. So this is a 2448 involute cutter, 30 degree pressure angle. The shaft is uh, out of what we believe to be a Shabara built tractor. Um, it's New Holland's the label on it, but it's the right vintage for it to be one of the Japanese made Shibara ones. So anyways, we're about ready to start some cutting here. Oh, and of course I could not find a lathe dog the right size. So this is some serious hillbilly rigging in a hurry because I'm still in the process of moving into the shop. I know doggone well I've got one, but I could not find it. So I finally just grabbed some stuff out of the scrap bin and built myself, a, for lack of a better term, a lathe dog to get the job done. So. Anyways, I'll shoot some video when we get cutting. All right, I just got done cutting the first tooth. Um, what I'm doing, by the way, to measure this thing, pretty hillbilly, but I found a, in the absence of a wire gauge right size, I found a drill bit that lays about in the center line of this tooth profile. It's hard to show you this looking at it from the end, but at any rate, I found one that lays in there pretty nice, and I am laying in that tooth and then measuring across it to decide if I've got a depth that I like the looks of. So we'll see how that works out in the long run. Um, anyway, first tooth cut. I'm going to set up to cut the next one, and I'll try and get some video footage of cutting that then. All right. I've been cutting these splines in two passes, so <clears throat> I'm on my second pass right now. Still kind of feeling my way down to the depth. This uh, cutter has a little bit different root profile than what the uh, original spline was, so it's making it a little bit tricky. I'm, my wire measuring trick, or uh, in this instance, drill bit measuring trick, says that I'm about right, but I'm leaving it... <clears throat> A little on the fat side because I want to actually feel it on the yoke that it slips into rather than just trusting numbers because I think the uh, say that I may not have the exact same cutter profile as the one that originally cut that spline basically though it's looking pretty good see how she goes don't know if I got brave or got stupid but I'm uh, taking it all in one pass now don't hear anything ugly happening so and I am running very low feed rates here so we'll see how this one looks and measures when I get done with it and decide if I want to keep up that way or not but anyway all right we're on our last cut here My gut tells me that we're going to have to go back around here and cut them a little bit deeper just from the way it's looking. <clears throat> and I intentionally held a bit to the fat side on my measurements. I'd really like this spline to not be rattly loose. So <clears throat> if I have to go back through here and take another five thou or something, I won't be heartbroken. But anyway, I have not been doing a good job of keeping tracks. There's been a lot of distractions, but I think I've probably got an hour or so and cutting my way around there if I had to guess. Anyway. Alright, based on my uh, wire gauge and calipers measurements, I had left it uh, about five thou on a side big, and I would say that my attempt to fit it in the spline agreed with that. Um, the yoke that goes on the end of here wouldn't even think about starting, so I'm being brave and taking the other five now. We'll see um, if it all of a sudden drops in there and rattles around, or if I need to shave some more, but it was tight enough that it gave me confidence that taking it to my theoretical dimension wasn't going to be crazy oversized, at least. All right. Well, moment of truth here. Oh man, that is nice. 
just the ever so slightest amount of play. Um, it's tighter actually than the original was. Is the original, you can see the spline only sticks in there about halfway. So I've got some unworn section of spline in the old one. This is a new um, U joint, so I've got factory original size there, and I've got just the slightest bit of play. It's less than what the original had, so I'm happy with that. Now I just got to get it flipped around, um, indexed. I think what I'm going to do is put it in there with my lathe dog loose on it. And then that will let me come up to the other end and feel it come in with my cutter into one of these teeth with it flipped around, get it set basically in position, and then slide my lathe dog up and tighten it up. One thing interesting I noticed, so this thing had, so I can get it to focus on it. It's hard to get it to zoom. All right. See that roll pin? So the point of that is to block off one tooth in this spline. And the yoke has got, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Okay, you can see it's got a wide tooth in it. And the point of that is to force you to index this thing correctly. Um, U joints need to be phased correctly or they'll hammer themselves apart. Well, the interesting thing that dawned on me looking at this, so on one end they're using a pin, like it's got a U joint like this on each end. On one end they use a bolt through the side that's got a dog nose on it that drops in that hole, and then on the other end they're using that wide spline tooth lined up. And those are both perfectly centered on these teeth. So I think what I'm going to do is when I get this thing all indexed, I'm going to make sure that I get indexed correctly so that I just don't cut this one. Rather than putting in this hole for this roll pin, I'm just not going to cut that spline groove, and that'll have the same effect. I really don't know why the factory didn't do that, to be honest with you, because this thing... Um, I mean, it saves a machining function. You're wasting your time cutting that groove and then drilling a hole for a roll pin. So anyway, we'll see if I can get my uh, cipher and all straight to make sure I can do that in the correct location. Um, I guess it won't be a big deal. It just dawned on me because I can do that and then add the hole after the fact. And the hole just has to be 180 degrees from where I leave the uh, wide tooth. So I guess it'll work out fine. I'll just go ahead and leave the last one. I just won't cut it. So. Anyway, I'll uh, show you guys probably the finished product unless something crazy goes wrong. Catch you on the next slide.